Hello, my name is Irina and I'm a product manager here at Converture. Today I will give you a demo of Convert Enterprise, which provides full enterprise grade management for virtualized data centers based on Zen and KVM. Together we will take a look at how you can do monitoring, configuration management, administration, and advanced automation for your Zen and KVM based environments. Here on the data center page, we see an at a glance view of our entire virtualized data center. In the summary section, we see information about server pools, servers, virtual machines that are running in this environment. You can see that I have two KVM and two Zen servers in this environment. The notifications quickly highlight any actions that require your attention. Of course, as you can see in my demo environment, I haven't been very good about clearing my notifications, so I have 200 outstanding. But of course, in your real environment, you'd be clearing those as you go ahead. And then it highlights what my storage allocation looks like to make sure that I'm not running out of storage for my virtual machines. The rest of this page highlights the top five CPU, uh, the top five servers and virtual machine by research usage. So the chart at the top highlights historical CPU utilization for the top five most utilized servers. One thing to know that Convert Enterprise stores all of the historical performance information in its data repository. So you can view the, uh, this information for a variety of time periods. By default, it's last 12 hours, but you can see today, last 24 hours, week to date, etc. And any time, custom time period, as long as the data is still stored in the repository. Similarly, you can also view the same information for memory utilization, not just CPU utilization. The bottom set of tables here highlight what are the top five most utilized servers by CPU and memory usage, as well as virtual machines by CPU and memory usage. This page is really geared towards you seeing, am I running into any problems? Do I quickly need to take corrective remedies um, and determine that information? On the configuration page, we summarize all of the configuration information across your environment. So total amount of resources, host operating systems. So in this case, I have two servers that are Red Hat and two that are SUSE. And then I have many more guest operating systems, such as CentOS, Ubuntu, Windows, and in addition to Red Hat and SUSE. We also allow you to define storage resources and virtual networks at the data center level and then make them available to different servers and virtual machines in your environment. Let's, for example, take a look at how you would go about managing storage. So if I click Manage Storage, I can add a new storage um, resource to my environment and Convert supports a variety of different storage options from clustered LVM to fiber channel to Oracle file system, NFS, anything you can think, think of is really here and you can add that in your environment. Once you do define a storage and make it available to different server pools in your environment, Comet will go ahead and configure that storage to be available from all of the servers so you can prov safely provision virtual machines and make storage available to them. The Servers tab at the data center level serves as a provides a consolidated picture of all of the servers and virtual machines in your environment. This is really where you can do freeform search of what are my most utilized virtual machines or servers, which virtual machines are running a particular t using a particular template, and anything else that you'd like. For example, we have a variety of searches already prepackaged, and you can do custom searches as well. So let me take a look at how I would find all of my down virtual machines. And here I see that these are all of the virtual machines in my environment that are currently shut down. The backup tab summarizes all of the backup information in your environment, and we'll talk a little bit later about how you define backups. But here you just see how many backup policies you have, how many failures you've experienced in the last seven days, and how many virtual machines are without backup in your environment. Similarly, you can see all of the backups that has ha that have happened in the past, and you can easily restore any of the virtual machines from their original backup. As you can see in this data center, I have three server pools defined, desktops, QA lab, and servers. If I take a look at the server server pool, we summarize similar type of information just at the server pool level. Top, uh, uh, top most utilized servers, virtual machines, as well as detailed configuration information. This 
server server pool currently has two servers, lab001 and lab002. If I take a look at the server homepage, similarly to some of the other pages, you see detailed information just for that particular server now. So platform, so this is a Zen server that's running SUSE. Um, it has four CPUs, memory, and I can see the uh, CPU and memory utilization for that server as well. I can see historical performance information in the performance chart here, as well as the breakdown of how my resources are currently being used in this environment. So for example, here, you know, I can see how many how much of the CPU is being used by my virtual machines versus DOM0 and versus being free in this on this server. Similarly, what are the virtual machines that are consuming the most amount of host CPU as well as memory? This page again is really targeted at giving you quick information so you can make quick reallocation decisions if needed. On the configuration page, you can see detailed configuration information for this server. You know, down to OS information, available interfaces, storage resources, etc. You can see detailed information about all of the virtual machines in this environment, as well as any tasks that would be performed on this server. If we take a look at the operations available on the server level, you can provision a virtual machine, restore virtual machines, start, stop, configure power management, etc. If we take a look at the, at the virtual machine, again with the same concept, you have all of the details for the virtual machine in this environment. Detailed configuration information about the template that was used, boot parameters, display information, all of that is available for you at a glance, as well as the backup information. If we take a look at the um, operations that are available at the virtual machine level, again, you can see a variety of administrative tasks. I can connect to the virtual machine console, start, pause, reboot, shut down virtual machine, you know, b back it up, restore from recent backup, etc. Let's take a look. I wanted to view console from the, this virtual machine. I click view console and now the console is being launched for this virtual machine and I'm being asked to log in. All of this happens from within, the, of course, the Convert Enterprise console. Now let's take a look at how you would go about provisioning new virtual machines in Convert. So Convert Enterprise provides templates-based provisioning so here I have a variety of templates that have been defined and templates can be organized into groups. So common and Zen Power Virtual. So if I look at the common virtual machine, I see all of the virtual machines that are, uh, or templates that are part of this group, uh, their versions. Importantly, I can also see all of the virtual machines that are using this template. This template to virtual machine tracking is important to making sure that your virtual machines are in compliance with your standards. So if you've tried to decommission the particular template, you want to make sure that none of the virtual machines are using it, etc. So here, let's say I have a CentOS template, uh, installed template, and let's take a look at how I would provision a new virtual machine. So I just right click and click provision. And as you will notice, Convert Enterprise allows me to select either a server pool or a particular server to provision the virtual machine on. So if I select the server pool, what Convert Enterprise will do, it will automatically find the server on the server pool that is best suited to host the additional workload. So let me uh, uh, select the server server pool and click OK to provision a new virtual machine. Here I'm asked to specify, I can see the details based on the template, and I can specify a name for this virtual machine. So let's say my demo VM. And I can modify a variety of parameters that are part of this template. So I have storage information, networks, boot parameters. I can also specify by default how I want to back up this virtual machine using which of the policies, credentials to log into virtual machine, high availability information, whether this virtual machine should be low, um, medium, or high priority for high availability purposes, and how I want to schedule the provisioning. So I'm going to say that I want to provision now, start virtual machine later, and I don't want to retire this virtual machine, or I could retire it at a later date. So here I click OK, and the pr I can see that provision virtual machine task has been submitted. So soon I should be able to see this virtual machine 
in the service server pool. So I see provision virtual machine tasks has succeeded. And now my demo VM appears under the lab 001 server under my server pool. Uh, because Karma determined that this server was best suited to host this virtual machine. So now I can go to the um, page for this virtual machine and I can see the same level of information we've seen before. And I can edit settings, again, view console, start this virtual machine, uh, you know, perform all of the same operations as you would perform normally on any other virtual machines. So now let us take a look at some of the more advanced automation functions available in Convert Enterprise. So if I right click on the service server pool, I see a variety of options such as configure high availability, configure dynamic workload management, and configure backup. So let's take a look at how you would configure high availability with Convert Enterprise. So here I can enable high availability and we give you two options for high availability configuration. You can either do virtual machine failover on the same machine. So whenever a virtual machine fails, Convert will automatically restart it on the same physical server. Or you can do virtual machine and server failover. So when a, uh, when a server fails, Convert will take all of the virtual machines that were running on that server and restart those virtual machines on a different server in the server pool. In the event of server failure, we can either migrate the virtual machines to another server in the server pool, and then you can optionally choose to migrate them back when the server comes up, or keep them as Convert chose to. Or you can migrate virtual machines to dedicated standby servers to your environment. So you can add standby servers here, and then dedicate those to be part of your high availability setup. When you choose server failover, we strongly encourage that you configure fe fencing in order to eliminate the risk of the same virtual machine running on two physical servers. So when you configure fe fencing, Convert will ensure that the unreachable server is disconnected from its storage or brought down, so you will not run the risk of the same virtual machine running on two different servers. And so here you can configure the different uh, fencing devices. Then, to configure high availability, you can tell us in what is the priority order for restarting your virtual machines. So let's say if you had a server that failed and was running five virtual machines, and Convert only can find capacity for four of those virtual machines on the other servers, what is the order of priority? And here you can designate critical, low, high, and medium, and we will restart the virtual machines in that order. So now we can click OK and high availability changes have been submitted. Similarly, let's take a look at the backup configuration for in your Convert Enterprise environment. So I click Configure Backup and what the way Convert works, backup policies work, you can define backup policies and make those policies operate on a variety of servers. So let's say I can create a new backup policy, My Backup, you, we can perform backup cold or hot backup, disk image backup or filed copy. You can select to create a tar file and use compression. And you can specify retention policy for your backup, either retain backup indefinitely or a, you know, a purging policy, if you will, to retain backup for some period of time. We, you can save the backups on one of the managed servers or you can specify a remote server where you would like to, accessible via SSH where you would like to store the backups. You have, have ability to provide a customized schedule for your backups, so either in the weekly, daily, monthly, or manual backups. And then you can specify which of the virtual machines should be part of this backup policy. So if you want to define a default policy for a server pool, you can say all virtual machines. This will ensure that even newly added virtual machines that are not there at the time of this policy will always be pr uh, backed up using this policy as well. Or you can select specific virtual machines that you want to be part of this policy. Okay, so let's cancel out of this flow. And then the last feature that I wanted to show is how to configure dynamic workload management and convert enterprise. So I click Configure Dynamic Workload Management, and Convert Enterprise supports two options, 
for um, convert dynamically managing your workload on your server pool. One is the even distribution policy and the other is the power save policy. The even distribution policy really makes sure that no server in your server pool is overutilized too much. So you can say distribute load when the server CPU is above a certain percentage for longer than a certain time period and reevaluate every let's say three minutes and run or run the policy in a particular schedule. What this policy will make sure that if hey if any server is running above 80 percent CPU utilization and I have servers in my server pool that are running below that I will redistribute capacity to make sure Convert will redistribute capacity to make sure that servers are more evenly utilized. The second policy is the power safe policy that makes sure that if uh, you have servers in your server pool that are running at really low utilization, you can, if you can find, if Convert can find capacity for those servers and other servers in the server pool, it will distribute that capacity and save power. So in this case, you can say consolidate when server CPU, let's say, is below 10% for longer than five minutes, but still keep server CPU below 80%. So if Convert finds one server that's where CPU utilization is below 10% and it has any other server that's between 10 and 80, it will try to consolidate onto that server. And again, si similar with the even distribution policy, you can also schedule the power save policy to run in a particular schedule. The last feature that I wanted to highlight is an, you know, the taskbar that we have here. So any operation that you perform and convert will appear as a task here in this menu. As you can see, you can see detailed information about the task as well as the user that performed this task and start and end time for this task. This provides a perfect audit trail in your environment, both for diagnostic purposes as well as making sure that you can track who does what in your environment. This concludes the demo for Convert Enterprise and I'll be back with future demos um, soon. Thank you very much and bye-bye.